Hi Pixies fans and welcome along to number 10 in this series of Pixie Casts and having been on Merseyside in the UK yesterday I'm heading back west again over to the States and you will see I am joined this afternoon by Jeff Bell. Jeff Bell, better known as Cameron Gray to us on, on Facebook. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm good, Andrew. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you very much for getting up early in the morning. I'm fine, thank you. I've, I've had a little bit longer to wake up. So what time is it with you over there? Uh, it's 8.13. Okay. And so that makes you five hours behind. So you must be on the East Coast of the States. I am. Uh, I'm in Maine on the, uh, I guess, the part closest to you. Indeed, yeah. And a lovely yeah. part of the world as well. So, yeah. Yeah. I, when I came over to the States, I've only been to the States once. I did a fly drive with um, some friends of mine. We flew, flew into New York and then hired a car, went up to Niagara and then cut across east and came down through Connecticut and Maine and Rhode Island and that. So, so I've seen a little bit of it. It's a beautiful part of the world. So have you lived yeah, there? It's... Lived there all your life? Uh, yeah, I uh, uh, I m lived most of my life uh, in the Boston area, and then mm -hmm. uh, my wife is from uh, this part of Maine, so we moved here uh, 18 years ago. So okay. I basically, lived two places my whole life. Right. Okay. And um, Boston, I, I managed to spend a day in Boston as well. Um, beautiful city, and of course, integral to the Pixie story. Yeah, it was. Uh, the timing and my location of of uh, of Pixies was perfect, so I feel very fortunate. Now you are proudly displaying your Pixies T-shirt, good man. Thank you. You've come appropriately dressed. Yeah, I believe it's uh, uh, Helen's Helene's Helen's uh, okay. a couple of years ago. Okay, can we see it? Can we see it in its full glory? Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Hopefully, Helen's watching it as well. So. Uh, she knows that her T-shirt's being worn all over the world, literally, which is I great love the shirt. See. So uh, what, what do you do for a living then, Jeff? Uh, I work for the state's pension system. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've, uh, I did facilities for about half, uh, about half the years that I've been there, uh, just taking care of the building. And then we got a new building. And then COVID hit, and I kind of was uh, moved back to my old position of calculating retirements. So Great. it was kind of a kind of a shock, uh, but it's uh, it's the perfect work from home job, sure. and uh, so I've been working from home uh, since March, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I love working from home. So <laughs> so it's all good. Yeah, it's, it certainly makes a difference to your day, doesn't it? You haven't got that commute to work, and don't have to think about whether you've got a clean yeah. iron shirt and stuff like that. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. Get to get to go out with the dog whenever I want and. The cat gets to bother me, which I think is coming over right now. So okay. So like me, you've you've got a dog and a cat in your life and a wife. <laughs> yeah, we have two cats, two cats okay. and a dog. So yeah, they yeah. keep us busy, as you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Absolutely, they do. Yeah. So um, so Pixies fan, where where did it all begin for you? Uh, it began in high school. Uh, uh, I think it was fall of '88. Um. One of my friends uh, came into my homeroom right before right before classes start and said I had a, a Walkman and he said you got to put this in and it was it was uh, it was Bone Machine from Surfer Rosa and yeah. it blew my mind um, and they were my favorite band from that second. So. Uh -huh. And were you living in Boston then as well? Uh, yeah, so I lived in uh, I lived in Quin I lived in Quincy, which is uh, bordering the bordering city. Okay. So, uh -huh. yeah. so um, obviously a proud fact that they were known as Boston Band and that as well. So uh, a real sort of a local connection for you. Yeah, but, it, you know, it was the uh, before Internet days and, uh, you know, finding them, finding more information on them was was challenging. So sure. I was uh, constantly hounding my local record store and listening to the one radio station that might play them. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it was nice you know, every now and then I'd hear, uh, I'd hear something on the radio. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, uh, my local radio, my local record store was pretty good. They, uh, they actually put up, you know, they have, uh, when releases are coming out of new albums and they actually put, uh, cause that was between Surfer Rose and Doolittle. So they actually put Doolittle up on the board for me. Okay. Uh, but it was, I forget what, I forget what the, 
the date it came out, but you know, uh, let's say it was up on the board and it was like April and then March came around and then they pushed it out to May and it like got pushed out a couple, a couple times on my board at least. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it was kind of frustrating, but, uh, but yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of fun doing the legwork to get more information. And, and, um, I guess being local to Boston and that then it was it easy to get to see them in those early days. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was very easy to see them. Um, it was about that time I started going to a lot of concerts too. So I saw them, uh, while I was in high school, I saw them about two or three times and then, uh, and then quite a bit while I was in college and then they broke up. So, yeah. and I guess throwing muses, they would have been around at the same sort of time as well, would they? Oh yeah. The, the, yeah. the Boston scene in, uh, uh, Lou Barlow's band that's a skate dinosaur junior yeah they were all uh it was kind of a kind of a cool scene uh kind of a cool scene back then so you must have seen plenty of great gigs over the years and I did you, I, uh, you know like I said I was uh I was 16 and 88 so uh, I had my my late teens and early 20s were uh you know the the bands that were were coming out in the late 80s and early 90s to mid 90s really were yeah. fantastic and I had uh you know a, a 20 minute subway ride to the venues so oh. yeah, happy days I feel very fortunate very fortunate great a great time to be there definitely yeah yeah so um and you stuck with them all through all through the breakup and the, all the different albums and different turns that they've taken musically um yeah sort of i uh when when they broke up uh when they broke up uh 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 the first frank black uh solo album came out and and i listened to it the first time and it was like all right i really loved los angeles and uh nothing else really resonated with me at that time but it was like all right there's there's some good stuff on here and the second one came out and it was less uh less clutching to me and the third one came out and it was even less clutching to me yeah, yeah. um so yeah that was uh that was basically the trend through the catholics and um uh in to leading up to the to the reunion until uh uh basically until i joined the group and the uh Planet Sound podcast uh, started highlighting all the albums, and I mm -hmm. decided to really give them, um, really give them another try. Yeah. And it, it and it uh, kind of surprisingly, it really it really took. Um, I think it helps them in my forties now, and yeah. musically, uh, while I still love the I still love the harder edge, you know, Surfer Rosa Doolittle stuff. Uh, I definitely have expanded more into my my mellow creative uh music side and sure. um uh, and his his music is so it's so creative uh in his solo career i listened to uh i listened to oddballs and uh gollum yesterday mm -hmm. yep. gollum, is, gollum is amazing it really it yeah. really is it's, yeah, yeah. it's so it's just so different from from what he did with the pixies and at the time i wasn't ready to receive it it's, it's just very simple and uh, you know, I wanted, I just wanted Pixies, 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 and it wasn't, yeah. and yeah. it was frustrating. So, sure. and of course, yeah. Go Gollum was an album that Kate Hester chose a track from the other day when I spoke to her as well. So, yeah, yeah, so it's got, got a second mention from you today. So, <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, you're a, you probably were more of a fan of the early stuff and then pre breakup, but now post breakup, you're, you're really, really keen on, on the stuff that they've done since they've reformed. Yeah, I, I love it. It's uh, um, especially the first. The first two were probably just a slight notch below, you know, the original stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but beneath the airy is uh, again, it's it's embracing this this new new thing. It was so you know, the, uh, Joe mentioned how personal it was, and uh, and I agree. It was it's just such a personal album. Yeah, and uh, and I love a lot of it. Uh, I, I love it all, I should say. But yeah. No, did I'm you, definitely did, pleased with their directions. Did you get to see them on on tour recently? I did. I, I, uh, I was one of five uh, one of five of our group who uh, got to do the East Coast jaunt of uh, New York, New Haven, yeah. Connecticut, and Boston. Um, oh. Yeah, it was uh, Jen 
Jen, Meg, Bob, and Kristen Whitaker. We all yeah. went, we went to all five and it was fantastic. And especially with COVID striking, uh, yeah. you know, a few months later, I'm so, mm -hmm. so glad that I sort of made that, you know, sort of made that happen and, and wasn't like, oh, I'll see him. I'll see him when they tour, when they yeah. come around again. And you one just of the best never, never know, do you? You just never know. No. Yeah, yeah. So, so where's where's the nearest place for you to go and see gigs like that if you want to see, you know, a reasonably um, big so band? So I'm in Central Maine, and I'm an hour from Portland, which is like the big city. Uh, yeah. So I'm an hour, uh, I'm an hour from uh, places where like I've seen Pixies in Portland um, a couple times. So or yeah, and uh, and then I'm only uh, uh, I'm a three hour drive from Boston. So okay. uh, so we go to we go to we go to Boston for gigs, you know, we, uh, I've talked to, talked with, with Brits about driving and distance. And I even <laughs> asked, uh, I asked Adam after his, his, uh, yeah, interview I, I saw that, that. Yeah. so yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, especially for nowadays, nowadays, since I'm a little bit older and the, and the driving takes its toll a little more, uh, it definitely has to be a good gig. I won't go for anything, but, um, yeah, you know, I'll, we'll, uh, we'll drive down it three or four in the afternoon, go to the gig. And, uh, you know, if it ends at 11, I'm home at two in the morning and, uh, I've learned to take the day off after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember last, um, was it last year? I forget where the, where the months and years are now with everything that's gone on this year. But when I saw them up in London on the, uh, Surfer Rosa Pilgrim, um, tour as well, that was, that was midweek. It was actually on, um, Halloween as well. So where I live is about two and a half, our drive up to London, which for you guys doesn't seem sort of very long. But for us Brits, anything over about half an hour, and we're like, really? We've got to drive that far? So, yeah, we, we don't like getting in our cars and going too long distances. But um, like you say, for something like that, it's, it's certainly worthwhile, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah, I've, uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if most Americans are like that, but I've been doing this, this drive between Maine and Boston, like it seems like all my life. Uh, uh -huh. so it's, it's literally just a sec, you know, second nature. If it's good weather, if it's not, you know, if it's not like raining hard or snowing or whatever, it's just such an easy drive for me. Um, oh. and I still have, I still have family in the Boston area. So a lot of times if we have a show on a Friday or a Saturday, we'll stay over, um, and then drive up early the next morning. So it's even easier. Cool. So can I, uh, can I nail you down then on one Pixies track if you had to choose out of all of them? Uh, it, it's always going to be Bone Machine because it was the it was the first song I heard and uh -huh. uh, it's just amazing. It's yeah. so good live. Uh, yep. Yeah, so so we'll go with that. There's a lot of contenders for number two from Doolittle, but sure. uh, but yeah, always a special place in my heart for Bone Machine. Yeah, and for me too as well. When I the first time I saw them live at Glastonbury in '89, they opened with Bone Machine as well. So uh, yeah, so it's, it's got a special special place in my heart as well. So. Yeah, that's a, a good uh, a good choice certainly. So um, so uh, prior to the prior to the uh, breakup of the band, the first breakup, well, the breakup if you like. Obviously, they've uh, had a change in lineup after that. But um, what what did you feel about? Uh, oh, here we go. Here's a, a visit from the cat. <laughs> Which cat is this that we're seeing a, a part this of? Is, this is Cosmo Kazi. Okay. He's the uh, he's the boy bully cat. The oh, other okay. cat to stay in my daughter's room because right because he's such a jerk. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so going into uh, into Frank Black's um, solo career, then you've spoken about uh, three of three albums, and um, how did you sort of feel about that? I mean, I was absolutely gutted when I, like you say, it's sort of pre-internet days, so I only found out in a music paper that the band had split up. I didn't know anything about it. So we had, um, back then we had two, two big music papers, one called The Enemy, and, which is New Musical Express, and the other one called Melody Maker. And it was in one of those two, or it might have been in both of them. They came out, they used to come out once a week. Um, and I just bought a copy and on the front page was Pixie Split. And I was absolutely gutted, I remember. So I imagine you sort of felt the same and uh, didn't quite know what was, the future was going to be. But uh, how did yeah, you feel about Frank Solicker? Definitely the same reaction. I was just, just, just gutted. Uh, I wasn't, Bossa Nova was my least favorite album uh, okay. during the time. And then Trump, Trump came out and it was, to me, it was such a, uh, 
I would just say a better album, but it was, it, it was, it was just, uh, it was more like a return to the sound that I kind of wanted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and again, the pre-internet days, we didn't know, we didn't know that there was all this tension when they were recording and, mm -hmm. and all that. So, uh, so I was just so excited, uh, again, about, all right, the, the direction they're going in. And then, yeah, then got the breakup news and I, I couldn't, I couldn't have been more devastated. Um, uh, so Kim went off and formed Breeders and um, Charles carried on just as, as Frank Black. And how did you feel about his solo career? Uh, like, you know, I, uh, uh, I guess I was just disappointed that it wasn't more pixie sounding. And, uh, you know, now I, now I hear that and it sounds stupid. Um, but again, I was, again, I want to point out I was, you know, 20, 20 yeah. years old, 21 mm -hmm. years old. And, uh, you know, you don't always want your bands to change when you're 21. So very true. Uh, now I understand evolution in uh, uh, in everything around that. So it's it's sort of two different perspectives. You know, back then uh, I wasn't really having it because I didn't want it, and uh, and now I now I appreciate it. So I'm glad I'm glad that the appreciation uh, eventually came. Mm -hmm. And um, have you got a favorite album of his in his solo career? uh album album would be tough because i'm uh again everything's so so new as far as really discovering okay uh the the first one you know it's sort of like the first one is is just the, i think the most consistently pixie sounding so i kind of mm. want to say that yeah but I, I do really enjoy uh the golem um so yeah i i guess i'd go i guess i'd go with the i guess i'd go with the first one Okay. Um, so the, uh, the eponymous is my, Frank Black. Yeah. is my favorite song. Okay. Right. So, I'll make a note of that one then. Calistan. I mean, I think there there are so many great tracks on on that album, and on yeah, Teenage, really and are. on Teenager yeah, as well. I feel I feel funny for you know really just uh, back in the day it was just oh, I was Los Angeles and then everything else was just disappointing and uh, yeah I listen uh -huh. now I'm like what the hell why wasn't this song resonating with you and. And you were still in Boston at that time, were you, during his uh, solo career days? Uh, yeah, I remember, I think the first album of his that I ever got while I was up in Maine, I think was the, Ca I think it was the Catholics. Okay. So did you, did you go and see him as a solo performer in, in Boston? I, I didn't, and I'll tell okay. you, uh, uh, I, I passed up many opportunities to, uh, his brother owns a, owns a bar, in uh, Cape Cod, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so an hour and a half or so from Boston. And yeah. uh, he used to play shows there all the time for like a hundred people, you know, just mm -hmm. him and a, him and an acoustic guitar. And yeah. I, I really do kick myself. Uh, I really do kick myself for that. Uh -huh. And Boston, of course, just talking a little bit about the city, it's um, got a very strong Irish heritage. Has, has your family got any Irish heritage or British? heritage uh, that you no, know of but, uh no my family doesn't but it it just made me laugh because uh my neighbor across the street uh moved from the boston area and they just put out an irish flag yesterday so uh, okay. <laughs> i'm like I, I i i said this morning when i took uh when i took my dog for a walk i'm like oh i really feel like i'm back in quincy <laughs> quincy, was, you... uh, quincy was like... a city it was like half irish half italian and, oh okay uh, right yeah and um, well, they're similar colours on the flags as well. So, um, so is that is that how you settle in then? Is it you uh, put up an Irish flag or an Italian flag if you move to the Boston area? <laughs> no, no, but but some people do. So, okay, I know they're big on St Patrick's Day, aren't they? On in Boston particularly. Oh yeah, yeah. Where I where I used to work uh, in Boston was right across the street from the oldest uh, uh, bar that everyone would go to on St. Patrick's Day. So it's kind of fun watching, uh, you know, I'd be working, it'd be eight in the morning and there'd be this line going, <laughs> yeah. going all the way down the street, which might not actually sound like much uh, to someone from the UK because, uh, uh, but yeah, here it was, it was kind of weird. Uh, you know, people so excited about, about drinking beer so early in the morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, St. Patrick's Day, a lot depends on where you are. But um, I mean, in the small town that I live, we don't have an Irish bar. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you go to London or the larger cities and that, there's there's plenty of Irish bars and 
people always claim Irish ancestry and that's <laughs> on St. Patrick's Day and they get the, get the pints of Guinness out and uh, have a good time. But um, yeah, it's just one of those things that's celebrated all over the world though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, we yeah. were, uh, uh, I had lots of Irish friends growing up, obviously. And uh, when I was 21 or 22, uh, we took a trip with another couple uh, down to Daytona, Daytona Beach in Florida. And it happened to be on St. Patrick's Day. And we went to, we found an Irish bar there and it was, uh, it was crazy. It was like, oh, you wouldn't expect to see this many in Daytona, Florida. But yeah, <laughs> there, there they were. You can find an Irish person anywhere in the world, I reckon. So it doesn't true. matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you yeah. are. So, uh, so the band reformed and I guess you were uh, pretty happy. Uh, the opposite, uh, the opposite emotion of, of finding out they broke up, definitely. Sure. Uh, so that was uh, uh, 2004. Uh, yeah. I saw them, yeah, I saw them uh, uh, two or three times in Boston on that, on that uh, reunion tour. And it was, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. Was it big news over there when they reformed? Well, <laughs> Pixies are never big news here. So okay. it's sort of, it was sort of like big news in the indie music circuit. Uh, okay. and that's about it but right. within that within that uh i guess within that narrow view it was big mm -hmm. yeah was it big, was it big over there i'm gonna turn a turn question um, on you again over. it's again it's it's the same for us here really if, if you're into your music and you know they were a big part of your life like they were for me then yeah it is big news because again um okay we had the internet and that then just sort of starting to take a hold but again it was really sort of buying the musical press and, and what have you to to find out this sort of stuff and then you start to find out some of the reasons why they split in the first place and those sort of tensions between Charles and Kim and, and what have you. So yeah, I mean, it, it was great when they did get back together again. And of course, you're not quite sure how they're going to be musically. Are they going to have changed very much and, and what the new stuff's going to be? And is it going to hold up to, to you know, Surfer Rosa, Doolittle, Pilgrim and, and Bossa Nova? Or is it, you know, is it not going to be quite the same? But um, they've certainly maintained their standards since reforming. Mm. And by then, by then the internet was there, and we kind of knew the story of the breakup and and what. So it was kind of uh, you know I'd, when I'd go to those shows from then on, I'd kind of watch uh, kind of watch the dynamic of the band, and uh, yeah, that was another just another interesting thing to watch. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And you're saying how, how much you enjoyed Trump Le Monde when it came out? Yeah, oh, I loved it. It was just uh, uh, I was. Uh, I was 19 or 20 in my sophomore year of college and uh, just the energy that it had was the energy that I was kind of feeling at the moment. Uh -huh. Cool. And um, of course, shouldn't forget the Catholics as well. Frank Black and the Catholics. Yeah, so uh, uh, about, I don't know, about 10 or 12 years ago, my wife got me into Wilco. And, oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm really seeing the similarities, some similarities uh, between uh, between the Catholics and uh, Wilco, like the, the general sound. So I'm really in, I'm really enjoying the Catholics now. I never ever ever thought I would say that. Okay. So. Yeah, a lot of people say it's a little bit more sort of country in that, isn't it? Orientated that. Yeah, you know, I like to say Western instead of country because okay. it used to be country and Western. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell me the I, difference. Tell me the difference, because we just call it well, country. We just call it country and western in, in the UK. So. I know. I really. I don't know the difference. I've just always hated country music, so I could never okay. say. I could never say that. But yeah, no, it's. Uh, it definitely has that, and uh, uh, the band is so different from the Pixies. Uh, the band is really the Catholics are really. You know, you can tell they're uh, skilled with their instruments. Mm -hmm. so. oh, absolutely. Yeah, so over here, when we sort of talk about country and western, the sort of on the, on the the sort of uh, don't want to offend anyone, the sort of rubbish end, if you like, it's sort of like Tammy Winnett and um, you know uh, what's her name, Dolly Parton, that kind of thing, the sort of the cheesy end of country and western. But then, of course, you know, you've also got great acts like um, Johnny Cash and, and different ones like that as well. So mm -hmm. it's, you can't just dismiss all of it, can you, as a genre of music? No, and I and I I definitely would gravitate more towards the older ones that you mentioned rather than you yeah. know the the new country pop that's out there. The country pop is just brutal. Okay, um, I'm I'm not even aware of it. I, I don't know that I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So, but no, certainly Wilco. I like I like Wilco as well, and and a lot of people in the group they mention Wilco quite frequently as being a a band that they enjoy as well. So, um, so some similarities there certainly between that and the work of the Catholics. Yeah, I think so. So, um, a Catholics track then? Could you uh, choose a Catholics track that you enjoy? Yeah, it's actually the the first one. Uh, again, the first one I ever heard. Uh, uh -huh. All my ghosts. All my ghosts. Yeah. Okay. That's... And it's not. It's actually for a Catholic song. It's not their typical song. It's it's definitely more lively. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just the song that resonates with me the most. And I think that was Jim Steely's choice as well. I think when I spoke oh. to him the other day. I'm pretty sure it's Jim. Certainly, someone. This way. I'm getting confused now with all these. I'm doing <laughs> kind of one a day. It's they're starting to merge a little bit for me. You're in double so, digits now, Andrew. Double We're all digits. I know. Together. Who imagined it would last this long, eh? So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that was Jim, and um, I think Jim and Kelly. It's a very special song for them, the pair of them. So, so yeah. So I think that gets a second mention so far in this series. All my ghosts, and. Um, Coming on to the the Pixies group and that, I mean, it's, it just feels so special that we're all so connected, literally all over the world. Um, and clearly, you've made some friends and, and met up with people and that, and had some special times with the people that you've met from the group. Yeah, uh, uh, I love the group. I love the group more than the music group. Um, yeah. I think I've been to five. I think I've been to five <laughs> happenings. Okay. And wow. And Claire and I uh, did a whole vacation a year ago, a uh, two week uh, fly and drive, like you called it. Yeah. We flew into uh, Austin, Texas. Okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, drove west and uh, we visited, uh, we visited people from the group in, in different cities. And it was, uh, it was so much fun. We just uh, yeah. talked about it today, how we would do it again in a heartbeat. And sure. uh, yeah, it was it was fun. It would have been great if we got to if we got to see a Pixies show during that during that trip. But uh, yeah. but yeah, the hap happenings are uh, happenings are fun. And uh, um, the big one was Na the big one was Nashville, and it was uh, uh, I think uh, probably a lot of people who went to uh, the Manchester one mm -hmm. that you guys went to. Yeah. Or, uh, it's kind of overwhelming when there's so many people and you're trying to yeah. have time with you know, 30 people individually, it's a little daunting, but yeah, sure. um, like the last tour, the last tour uh, when we, you know, we did the New York, uh, uh, New Haven, Boston thing, like the New York one was great. Uh, mm -hmm. Danielle came over from Australia and yeah. you know, people came from, uh, from all parts of, of the country, you know, California and Montana. And um, yeah, it's, it's great seeing people do that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it relatively easy to travel around the States? I mean, I guess you have to, it's either a long drive or you have to hop on a plane, but um, I think sort of getting planes and that internally is, is quite, quite common, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like we, we drove to Nashville. I actually broke down. It was like uh, uh, almost 1300 miles. Wow. Uh, we broke it up into two days and, okay. uh, and yeah, that was, that was long. Um, yeah. But typically, you know, typically yeah, uh, it's very easy to fly from, from just about anywhere to just about anywhere. Okay. So, and relatively yeah. cheap to do it, is it? It's not, not expensive? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it used to be back in the day. Like, I can I can hop on a plane and get to New York uh, round trip. You can get a deal for less than $100. So I call oh, that pretty cheap. That is pretty cheap, yeah. No, that's, a, yeah. that's a good deal, certainly. So you've been uh, making friends for life then through the Pixies group, which is fantastic. Yes, yeah, it is. And it's it's great to hear that these sort of events are happening all over the world as well. I spoke to Gail, Gail the other day in um, in New Zealand, and she just pops over sometimes when when we're allowed to fly. Obviously not at the moment, but she pops over to uh, to Australia and, and met up with some people in Melbourne and went to the gig in in Melbourne and that as well. So it's fantastic the way that this group has been bringing so many people together. Yeah, I mean it's it's great to be there, and then uh, you know when the Pixies go to different parts of the world, it's great to to see all that stuff happening, you know, yeah. it's great to see that happen in New Zealand and Australia. And yeah. it's definitely the thing now, you know, when Pixies uh, tour and they go to a, uh, and they go to a, you know, go to a city, it's let's meet up in that city and yeah. hang out and see the Pixies together. And of course, I mean, you, you mentioned about Meg earlier that you met up with Meg. And of course I've met up with Meg as well when she came over 
for Adele's wedding as well. So, um, and spent some time with her, which is, which is really great. So we've got that sort of interconnectivity as well. So yeah. And yeah. Kurt. Yeah. And Kurt as well. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt's yeah. been a bit, bit quiet recently. I don't know. I don't know what's up with <laughs> Kurt, but, um, yeah, we roomed, uh, we roomed with him and Gabby, uh, uh -huh. in Nashville. We did a, yeah. we did a, uh, uh, what the heck are they called? It's been so long now when you rent a house. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. So yeah, we, yeah. Rented, we rented a house in Nashville together and that was fun. Mm -hmm. And um, you've, you've spoken about Beneath the Eerie, the most recent album, of course, and uh, you saw them on that tour. Quite different, I think, Beneath the Eerie to what had gone previously, but um, an album yeah, that you enjoy. Yeah, Yeah. But you, you like it as an album. I love it as an album. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, it was so, how can you not like uh, when someone pours their heart, their heart out uh, in a recording? It's, it's pretty rare. Uh, I remember Beck did the same thing when he uh, uh, when he got divorced. He put out like this just amazingly sad uh, album. I think it was, okay. was it Mutations. Not sure. Beck okay. fans can chat on that. But I remember I remember listening to it and being like, "Wow, you know, <laughs> wow, this is really different." And then I heard the story behind it and I'm like, "Okay, that yeah, makes sense." Yeah. And did you see Pixies when they were touring with Weezer as well? I did. I saw them. Uh, I saw them twice on the Weezer tour. The national happening uh, was uh, was Weezer, and okay. then I saw them. Uh, I saw them in Connecticut, uh, and Bob Bob Poitras and Kristen Whitaker were there. Were at that show too. So. Okay. And how were Weezer then? Because Weezer, they sort of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, they're, they're definitely kind of a polarizing group in uh, in, in our group, aren't they? Uh, they are, I like them. Yeah. I like them. I think they're really good live. So, um, I mean, I think so, most I think most of the problems people had is you know was the whole Weezer should be opening for Pixies. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, which talent talent wise, we can all kind of agree. But you know, uh, it's been said. You know, who makes more money? And yeah, it's no, Weezer, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that would be the case over here as well, although we haven't really heard of Weezer for quite a few years, but a few years back, they, they were pretty popular over here as well. So certainly if you, if you went along a high street and asked uh, people if they knew Weezer or if they knew Pixies, I'm sure Weezer would be the more popular. Yeah, yeah. doesn't mean they're better though. Absolutely not, <laughs> no, indeed. <laughs> certainly not in this group. <laughs> Indeed. So how do you see the future of Pixies once they can uh, get back on the road and that again? Do you think uh, they'll return in, in good form? I do. I'm kind of curious to see, uh, you know, once once touring starts again, uh, what they're going to play, because they never really got they never got to be the headliner uh, for their new album other than yeah. New Zealand and Australia. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if they're going to do that. They're they're evidently uh, recording or recorded new material. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if a new album or EP is going to come out, but it, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see what they play. I mean, as someone who's seen them so many times, I'm, I would be perfectly okay with, you know, if they just did a smattering of, of, uh, you know, the original stuff uh, sure. and then played more of their, more of their new stuff. So Absolutely. I'm kind of, kind of hoping they would do something like that, but you know, then you have, uh, uh, you know the anniversary of of uh, Bossa Nova and Trump, and they've done they've done the anniversary tours for the other albums. So mm -hmm. I uh, I don't know. It's like they can't do it all. So no, it'll be, it'll be no. interesting to see what they pick. And we're we're all be pretty old by the time they do a thirtieth anniversary for uh, Beneath the Eerie, won't we? I certainly will. Ah uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> certainly hope that will be a sit down gig when they do that tour <laughs> I do I hope, I hope we're still going to gigs uh, uh, when Absolutely. we're in our 70s or, or more yeah. or more it would be more for me 30 yeah. the Rolling, yeah. the Rolling yeah. Stones and, and whatever can still can still play gigs I think we can still show up for gigs absolutely absolutely <laughs> okay and um, talking about gigs I'm going to leave you with this final question the question that you know is coming and the one that I've been <laughs> asking uh, other people throughout uh, this series of questions and uh, it was revealed who it came from yesterday if you if you saw the one that I did yesterday with uh, Joe Kirkham the lovely Joe Kirkham up on Merseyside and it was Joe who actually did come up with this question originally for Adam Short but I think it's only fair that I ask pretty much everyone else who I interview 
in these series. So you're having one of those awful dreams where suddenly you've been put on a stage naked in front of a huge crowd and they're all waiting for you to sing a song. Which Pixies song are you going to sing, Jeff? Uh, so I gotta pick something quick. Uh, and <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, Pixies have a lot of uh, brief songs. So uh, I don't think this is their briefest, but it's definitely the one that, that came to me as an under two minute one would be Wild Honey Pie. A, cover. Uh, a Beatles cover, of course. <laughs> yeah, I love the Beatles, so yeah. it works. Excellent. Okay, right, that's your choice. Well done. And then you'll be off stage as quickly as possible. <laughs> Definitely. It's for Jeff, everyone's best interest. <laughs> Jeff, it's been great to speak to you. Thank you so much for giving up your time so early in the morning as well. What, what have you got planned for the rest of the day? Uh, I have nothing. I have, uh, I have Monday off also, so I have a three-day weekend and uh, nothing really planned. So today's going to be, a, uh, I think, a relaxing day and then I'll probably do errands tomorrow. Well, I can see the sun coming through the window behind you, so it looks like you've got some decent weather to enjoy. Beautiful, beautiful weather right now, so uh, I'll get outside a little fall. bit. Lovely. It's been great to speak to you, mate. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, and, it's great uh, to be here with you. Hopefully one day we will get to, meet up. get to meet up. I look forward to it. Okay, you take care, my friend. All the best. All right, bye. Cheers.